Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and I am a maker based in Northern California where I live with my husband and our four children. This is my little space on YouTube where I like to journal and document and talk about my knitting. And if you are new, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. And if you are not yet subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you could go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me and yeah. Let's get into episode 10. So before I get into what I'm wearing, I'm gonna actually jump into my finished objects right away. This is a recently finished object, but um, I wanted to actually go in chronological order, my finished objects, and this is kind of down the line. So before I get into this one, I want to start with the order of completion, <laughs> I suppose. Um, I have a few finished objects that I wanted to share with you today. Um, I think I have like five. <laughs> it's been a bit, it's been a minute since I've actually had like an actual podcast where I share finished objects and stuff. I guess. But yeah, um, I have a few finished objects that I would like to share today, and some whips. I don't have a whole lot of whips because. I've kind of been trying to work through my finished objects and get those completed and so my whips are smaller today and I have a little bit of acquisitions as well so let's start with my finished objects. I have three finished objects that were shared in my last two episodes but I kind of wanted to showcase them again I suppose and talk about them in more detail because I just briefly mentioned them in those last two episodes so I just wanted to briefly mention them and share some thoughts about the patterns and also kind of a review I guess and yeah so let's jump in. <laughs> the first one is my uh, camisole that I finished over the summer and this is camisole number nine which is a pattern by my favorite things knitwear and I talked about this pattern in my reflections my spring and summer reflections video which was my last episode and I talked about a few things that I kind of did not like not about the pattern but about how I made the pattern. And I guess I'll just reiterate a bit of that. Um, so I made the My Favorite Things camisole number five a few months ago. I think I finished it in August. And I wasn't completely happy with how it turned out or how I knitted the garment. I could have done better I could have done, I could have improved, I, I don't know, I didn't necessarily mess up. I made some mistakes and I didn't like how it, how the final finished object turned out. So I made a size medium and I knitted it with Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the color Raspberry Pink. And so let me start with the start. So when I this is a top-down camisole. I generally prefer for garments that have straps or, you know, like spaghetti straps or tank tops. I prefer knitting them from the bottom up. And this is knitted top-down for a few reasons. I like having one garment <laughs> continuously and then moving on to individual parts of the pattern. With this, you have four parts going on at the same time. So you have a front and then you create a back piece and then you create another part for the another front and then another back you 
join and then you start knitting down and you join the back at the back and then you join at the front and you knit the front then you knit down then you join at the armpits and then you knit down and you finish the body you go back you pick up the neck uh, edge and then you pick up the armholes that's a lot going on for me <laughs> at the same time whereas with a bottom-up construction you would knit you know you would cast on you would knit down and then you would separate the front and the back for me that's easier I I prefer that method so this is all about general preference so when I joined the front I think it was the front here I had joined here and I joined it twisted so I was like a little way down and I realized okay it's twisted I need to go back so I ripped back and I had to redo it. I redid it and I redid it twisted again. <laughs> I was, I knew that it was twisted the first time and yet I did it again. So I ripped it back a second time and I finally joined it where it wasn't twisted. And I continued, I ran out of two balls of yarn then I picked up the neck and I joined the yarn, I knitted the neck, I seamed it down, I did not like how I seamed it down, and then I did the arms, I seamed it down, and I did not like how I seamed it down there as well. And then I picked up the rest of the third ball of yarn and I knitted all the way down, I finished it off, and I have this much yarn left. So, I wasn't playing yarn chicken, or ch yarn chicken or anything. I knew I was close to running out of yarn, so I was ready to bind off. I've kind of been this year in a mood to not have leftover yarn. I've been trying to get through my projects with as much yarn as possible and not have anything left over. That kind of bites me in the butt later on and <laughs> we'll talk about that but <laughs> so I had that much yarn left I was able to finish the project perfectly fine but I did not like how I seamed the edges down and that is no fault of the pattern she gives very clear instructions she gives a video instruction actually and it's very well done I think how she explains it to be knitted down I think it's lovely I just didn't do it very well so all of that being said I just did not like how mine turned out but I think it's a really beautiful pattern it's a beautiful design I'm not the biggest fan of this yarn it kind of pills a little I don't know if you could actually see it but yeah I honestly prefer Siniscarn Tinlina <laughs> over the pure silk. I, it feels very similar to me, like the drape and the feel of the yarn in hand. I think they both feel very similar for different compositions, but I just prefer the Tinlina a little bit more. And I've actually, I used that quite a bit this summer, so I really enjoyed my garments with that yarn the tin lena. This was my first time using the knitting for olive pure silk and I wasn't, I don't know, I wasn't, I'm not the biggest fan. I'm not saying anything wrong, that there's anything wrong with the yarn, I just think I prefer the tin lena a little bit more for a summer weight, summer blend fingering weight yarn and I think that's really all I have to say all that's left to say about this pattern I haven't really worn it much I will try to include some b-roll footage if I haven't already or a picture if I haven't already and yeah to see what it looks like it's a little long but I'm just 
that's fine, <laughs> I guess. It's longer than my desired length, but it's okay. Let's see, it reaches a little past my hips, and I like my garments like right here, so. It's not the biggest deal, it's not the end of the world, and I don't know. I talked about that, more of my feelings in my last episode, so if you're interested in more details about that yarn, I talked about it in my spring and summer reflections video, which was my last episode. Moving on to my second finished object, I also shared in my last episode, and it was a Monday Sweater Junior, which was a pattern, which is a pattern from Petite Knit, and I knitted this for my toddler for her birthday, which was in September. And it has not been, well, at the time I made it, it wasn't cool enough for her to wear it yet, so... It's finally, finally getting a little bit cooler so she can start wearing that more. But the yarn that I used is Cislerger Merino Singles and Mohair in the colorway Tivoli. And it's just, it's just, it's so pretty. It's like sprinkles, and <laughs> I just really love this. I have plans to make myself a bigger version of that, and yeah. So the Monday Sweater Junior, which is a pattern by Petite Knit, is a basic raglan. There's a three-stitch raglan, and then a fold-over neckline. Oh. And it, she has a bunch of sizes for that sweater. So I've made it, I've made the Monday Sweater Junior. This is the third time, I think, third or fourth time I'm knitting the Junior pattern. And I have made the Monday Sweater adult size version for myself as well, and I love that sweater. So I have plans, fall plans, to make another one for myself. And I have plans for the future to make a matching one to match my toddler. But by the time I end up making my version, it will probably be, she won't be able to fit in this anymore. So might not be matching anymore. So that was my second finished object. And my third finished object was also mentioned in not my last episode, but my fall, fall planning video where I talked about all the things I wanted to make this fall and I had already finished that one by the time I had recorded that episode. So it is the gingham sweater and this is a pattern by Sanis Garn. It's from this booklet. And that is booklet 2308 volume one. And I will really do my best to include B-roll footage because this really deserves, like, to be showcased because it is so pretty. So, all right, let us just talk a little bit more about this design because I wanted, I didn't go too much into detail about it in my last episode. Oops, can you see that? No, I feel like this is... I feel like I'm most proud of this one and this knit. These two knit garments, I feel like, have been my proudest knitting moment. And I'm really, I, I'm really, I'm happy that they are completed and they're part of my wardrobe and yeah. Okay, so let's dive into the details about the sweater. The gingham sweater is a pattern from Sandis Garn's DIY booklet 2308. They came out with two booklets this fall Volume one and volume two. I have a lot of patterns from both of those booklets that made it onto my plans list this fall. And this was the, this was the number one. Well, I guess they tied, these two tied for number one. The gingham sweater is an Oliver Colorworks sweater and you use three colors. It is knitted with pure gint 
And the colors I used were the colors that they included in the sample. Let me double check what they were because I cannot remember. So marzipan, light brown, and acorn. So I used the exact colors that they used on their sample model photos and I am really happy with my color choices. I fell in love with that pattern and that design and the colors that they used. So I essentially just copied it. <laughs> Cause why not? Okay. So like I said, it is all over color work and it has German short rows, German short row shaping for the shoulder shaping, and you are doing increases and German short rows and coloric all at the same time as you create this back, the, the back shaping of the back panel or the shoulder shaping of the back panel. So you're doing three things at once. And I think because you're using three different techniques at the same time, this pattern is marked as advanced. It is marked as five out of five stars. Yes, advanced, five out of five stars for difficulty. I had done German short rows and increases at the same time because that is essentially how you do the European shoulder shaping that is present in a few of Santa's Garn's patterns. So, <laughs> again, this part here, you're doing increases on the inside and the outside, and you're doing German short rows on the inside and the outside, and you're doing color work. So all of those combined has this pattern being ranked as an advanced difficulty. Once that's done, it's just easy going from there. So I think if you are an adventurous knitter, you can definitely go for this pattern. I wouldn't suggest this pattern as your first Santa's Garn pattern because some of the language might be new or not the language necessarily, but the way that they, their pattern writing style is, it's very shorthand, which is the nature for all of their patterns essentially because word count, number of pages, all of that stuff comes into play in a physical pattern booklet. So it's very shorthanded writing. I think all of the information that you need is in this pattern. And yeah, I would say if you are an adventurous knitter, an intermediate adventurous knitter, I would say, and you are interested in knitting that pattern, I would say go for it. It's a fun knit. I did not want to put it down. I enjoyed knitting on it very much so yeah that is the gingham sweater I need to re-block my sleeves because it keeps getting kind of like compressed on itself and that's it's fine on the inside I just need I just need to re-block it and pin it because I didn't pin it the first time I washed and blocked it so it has two by two ribbing all over so two by two ribbing the collar and fold it over. Two by two ribbing on the sleeves and a split hem and two by two ribbing on the bottom. <clears throat> and then you do the, what is it called? Rearranging of the stitches and do Italian bind off. And that's what I did. Because I really prefer an Italian bind off over just bind off how the stitches appear. I just prefer Italian bind off better. And that's my gingham sweater. And that was my third finished object. And I will move into my fourth finished object, which is the Eva cardigan. And this is a pattern by Petite Knit, and I have been wearing this nonstop. And so much that you might be able to see some of the pilling on the sleeves, <laughs> on the inside of the sleeves. I don't know if you can see that, but 
yeah, I've been wearing this a lot. It's just such a classic piece that really just fits right into my wardrobe. I needed, I really needed a staple garment like this. So the Ever Cardigan is knitted with Pierre Gint and the color I chose was the color she had in her sample, which is Night Sky, I believe. It's not Sailor in the Dark. Sailor in the Dark is a much darker blue. And I think that's just Double Sunday. So this is, I, th I really think it's Night Sky. And the yarn is Pure Gint. Did I say that? So Pure Gint, Sandus Garn, and the color is Night Sky. So this is the continuation of her contiguous drop sleeve line I suppose <laughs> so yeah it's just it's got that really nice shoulder detail there on both sides and then yeah two by two rib and then the two by two button band and this was the button band construction was somewhat new to me it wasn't just yarn overs and knit two togethers. It was it was a different construction. I don't even remember what. But yeah, it was a new to me um, uh, construction, but it's pretty neat. Uh, I probably could, yeah, and I like it. I like it a lot actually. It's wide enough to fit um, my giant little, <laughs> what are these called? Tortoise shell buttons? But yeah, um, this was one of my fall plans that I had wanted to have completed and I'm really happy that I have this done. This was a fun knit and I have plans to make more because it is such an easy to throw on and easy to just grab and walk out the door and it's just it was a fun knit I have plans for my toddlers first before I make another one for myself but that again will be further down the road because I have a lot of things that I want to knit Yes, and my final finished object is what I am wearing, and this is the Artisan Cardigan, which is a pattern from Sanis Garn, booklet 2308, the same booklet as the gingham sweater. Okay, I have a lot of thoughts about this, and I want to give an in-depth review, and I hope it's helpful for anyone who is interested in knitting this pattern. So... I'll stand up and I'll just share a little bit of the details of this. There are some chunky cables on the left side and a gorgeous chevron texture on the right side. And the back is a moss stitch and the sleeve moss stitch and then two by two rib on the sleeves on the bottom and then <clears throat> and then the double knit button band with three buttons that's slightly not centered this one's a little off but that's okay nevertheless i am very proud of this piece what is the word? This is my magnum opus. Is that the word? I think. Okay, so I'm a little, I'm getting a little hot from all the talking and moving around. So I apologize if I look a little sweaty. <laughs> okay, I knitted this with Double Sunday and Tinsel Mohair, which is the pattern yarn recommendation. And I knitted this with cardamom, double Sunday cardamom, and tin silk mohair marzipan. The cardamom was some stash yarn that I had had in my stash for almost three years. 
or for as long as <laughs> this yarn, came, the double Sunday came out. I bought it like right away. And the marzipan was a new addition to my stash. So let's talk about the construction. This is a partially seamed piece. So you knit the back panel all the way down. You do increases for the arms, the armholes, and then you pick up stitches for the shoulders, individual stitches, not, yes, individual stitches, one at a time, a panel at a time. So you actually do this panel first. So you pick up the stitches for this panel, you do some short row shaping, and it elongates this part right here. Then you'd knit all the way down following a chart. I'm gonna, I have some thoughts about how the charts are. I'll get to that in a second. Then you pick up this shoulder portion here, short row shaping while starting the cables. There are chunky cables and it's like 17 or 18 stitches apart, which I love. <laughs> It's just, it's just long enough for me to not lose interest. It's just what, far enough or wide enough for me not to lose interest. And then you knit down. You're doing increases on both sides as you're knitting down. The increases for this part here and this part here are included in the chart. Then you knit down some more. You reach your desired length. Then this is on hold while you're doing this part. Once you're finished with both of these panels, then you pick up the ribbing here, here, and then you knit across, not here, sorry. <laughs> you pick up here and you start doing two by two ribbing. You join, you join, the ribbing is joined here. These two parts are still separated. You do ribbing across the back, you join here, you knit across. These two parts are also still separated. <clears throat> and then you do ribbing. You finish the ribbing. And then you seam up the sides. What I did is I joined the ribbing. I did a few rows of ribbing and then I seamed up. In hindsight, and I put this on my Ravelry notes, I should have steam blocked before seaming because once I seamed it up, um, it was not this side, it was this side. I was off by like two or three stitches and it sort of worked itself out after I um, started the arms. So it worked out in the end, but I kind of in hindsight wished I had steam blocked this before seaming it up. So, so like I said, in hindsight, I wished I had steam blocked it before seaming the edges, but at the end, it really didn't matter too much once I picked up the sleeves because it kind of just evened itself out and there you can't really see that I picked up, I didn't, like I e unevenly picked up, <laughs> I unevenly seamed the garment together. So it's okay <laughs> and it doesn't bother me now. You do that, you seam, you do the arms. I did one arm, um, I did one sleeve. And then I had one ball of the double Sunday left because I did a full extra cable than what the length in the pattern was recommended. I didn't think <laughs> that I would run out of yarn. I should have known, but I wasn't really thinking. I ran out of yarn. I had one ball of yarn left. And that was not gonna last me a sleeve and the button band. So I went ahead and I ordered two more balls hoping and praying that they would at least be very similar match. And thankfully it was, and you can't even tell that this sleeve, part of the sleeve actually, it's like about here. I think I ran out of, right about here, I ran out of yarn. 
and then the button band. So I was fine. They match well. And with the marzipan tinsel mohair, it sort of melds everything well. And you can't really tell that there's a different, that I used a different dye lot for half of a sleeve and for a button band. Like you can't tell at all. So I did a, I did one, one sleeve and then I decided to pick up the double knit button band and I picked up too many stitches. Now the pattern is actually clear on how many stitches to pick up per centimeters per 10 centimeters or something. And then it tells you one stitch per stitch. And somehow I picked up way too many stitches. So I made it all the way up, <laughs> all the way around like to about here. And as I was knitting up this part, I was thinking to myself, that looks really off. That does not look right, but I think I'll just keep going and Maybe I can block it out. <laughs> it, I frogged it because it was just out. <laughs> I took a picture of it and I'll put it here so you can see the mess that I did. But I ended up frogging the whole, the entire button band, which if you know about frog, if you don't know about frogging mohair, it's not the best experience, so. I had to cut it a few times and sort of just like maneuver stitches around to get it to frog off, frog out and it was a mess. <sighs> yeah, so I decided to just put the button band on hold and continue with the second sleeve. I did that. Then I went back and I picked up the button band and it worked out fine in the end and I was all fine and well. So it's no, it's like the the button band stitch count is half of what I normally or what I have done in the past. I think it's like eight stitches. So if you know how a, a double knit button band works, it's like you're knitting and slipping a purl stitch. So essentially it's like four stitches on the front, four stitches on the back. So it's really just a four stitch button band which seems kind of small to me but it works with this design and I'm happy with it I like how it looks I love how it turned out and yeah okay I had some buttons in stash and I just used it it's like a dark a dark very dark brown almost black oh that's not yeah almost black is it a tortoise shell? I can't remember the name of it. I have a few thoughts that I want to share. So how this, how the charts are written, you are given two charts. You're given a chart for this panel and you're given a chart for this panel. How the chart is written is you are given the instructions for this with the increases and not the increases on the arms. So you're given this part here and straight down, but you're given the increases for the button band. You're not given instructions for the increases on the sleeve on the chart. The chart does not have the increases for the arm holes on either chart. You're not given increases to shape the arm holes. Essentially, it just tells you to do increases when you reach this certain measurement and that was fine for me. I was able to <laughs> kind of just measure and add increases and then work the rest of the stitches into the pattern because you're not given the increases in the instructions so you're not given the instructions for this portion. So six stitches along the Outside of these panels, both panels, you're not given that instruction. You kind of have to intuitively realize that you have to do those increases at a certain measurement in the garment and then knit on <laughs> in the same texture that you're already knitting on here. Now for the cable portion, that was fine. 
because once you do the increases, you're doing a purl. There's a purl ridge along this entire section here. The chart is written where the extra small stops at a certain point and you go, you, you have to physically put your own line or sticker or whatever it is you use to separate sizes and then the other size and then it's written up to 4x to 5xl i just used the sizes for the the chart for the size the larger size to figure out my stitch count and that worked for me if you are the 5xl you're kind of out of luck you kind of have to like figure it out on your own and then that's my problem with this pattern. The chart is written, the way the chart is written, you're only given up to here. And then the chart stops. So with the cable, it's easy to knit down and, you know, figure out, okay, I am on row 10. I need to knit like 10 more rows to get to the next cable. With the texture, you are out of luck. You have to go back into the pattern, into the chart, and figure out where your next row is coming from because it's not, they don't give you that information. So it was fine. <laughs> I just went back and I, I actually had to tink back quite a bit with this pattern, which wasn't fun. But, yeah, so I have some thoughts about the charts in this pattern. I really feel like they could have given just a block, one more small block. They could have included it, and it would have been helpful for, like, if you stopped knitting at, if you stopped knitting here, they would, should have given a block with the texture with a chart for the texture and that's my little bit of gripe about this pattern and I really love it I have been wearing it so much I almost I wanted to wash it before wearing it uh, for the podcast but I didn't think it would dry in time I've been wearing it a lot but yeah it that detail that little bit of detail really could have helped a lot of like tinking back and just a lot of like hair pulling. <laughs> but that's my opinion. That's my personal thoughts. I love the pattern. I don't know if I'll be making it again anytime soon. <laughs> but overall, this was a really lovely design. Aside from a missing chart that could have been very helpful. Not that it was missing. It would have been very helpful to be included in this pattern. But I understand page counts and word counts and all of that stuff so that's just my two cents overall i love this pattern i love this cardigan i've been wearing it a lot and i love the general fit of it it's the perfect amount of positive ease it's just the right amount that i love i love where my sleeve length falls initially when i made it it had stopped to like right here before I washed and blocked it and it grew to the length that I really love. So yeah, I do want to make another one eventually at some point, <laughs> but today is not that day. Moving on. That was the last of my finished objects and I have a few whips that I wanted to talk about and I will go ahead and talk about my smallest whip first and then I'll move on to the other two. <sighs> this is the Guernsey Genser mini version that I am making for my youngest. I am knitting this with double sundae and silk mohair in what is the color I'm using? Where is my bag? I am using the color 3532 Double Sunday and Leftover Tin Silk Mohair 3511. And they are slightly different colors, but they blend beautifully and I am enjoying 
this combination, this color combination, this color. So I had started this in August and this is kind of like a pre-knit for my Guernsey Gamster. So I wanted to make one for my toddler and she's not a toddler. I wanted to make one for my youngest and then cast on one for myself. So I shared the plans for that in my fall video and I hope I can get this done soon. So I also, with this, I didn't read ahead and I might have read ahead and I just forgot because I put it down for so long. I generally try to read ahead in patterns so I have a general idea of like what's going on or what's going to happen. And I do think I read ahead, I just forgot. But you're supposed to do sleeve increases, armhole <laughs> increases, I keep saying sleeve increases, armhole increases here and here. And I am like three or four centimeters like past the point I'm supposed to be doing sleeve, arm, hole increases. So I am not going to tink back or frog back to add armholes. It's just going to be slightly oversized on her. So I, I should have started armhole increases here, about here, and I didn't. I just kept knitting down following the chart. In this chart, again, <laughs> the increases are not indicated and it's not indicated where you start increases. It's a chart given for multiple sizes and you have to figure out where you need to do your increases and yeah. <laughs> It's okay, it's fine, I'm fine with it, and I will just start the increases now. I have fuzz all over my face and flying everywhere. Okay, so that was my first whip. My second whip is something that was spontaneous, it is not part of my fall plans, and I really should have finished it last week because it was a birthday sweater for my husband, and his birthday has already passed. I haven't made <laughs> done much on it. Oh my gosh, I did this last year for him too, and the poor thing is still sitting. Okay, so this is an acquisition slash whip, and I got the newest Sandus Garn booklet. Not the newest, one of the newer ones. This is the theme 75, and there are some gorgeous color work, traditional Norwegian color work designs. And I started on this one. So I wanted to make it in the sample colors because lo and behold, that is who I am. But they didn't have the color, the yarn colors available. So I went with something else. Also, this is also yarn acquisitions. So this is the Oh my gosh, let me look it up. I forget what it's called. This is the Tinda or Tinde. Correct me if I'm wrong. Tinda or Tinde. I hope it's not Tinda. Tinde. <laughs> Tinde men's sweater. And it is traditional Norwegian color work, I guess. So. You're supposed to fold the collar down at the end. I actually wanted to knit the collar down and I forgot. Collar, collar, neckband, turtleneck, see? Folded collar, I don't know. Okay, so this is what I have. I actually had more than this. I had this much on Friday. And I realized that my motif wasn't lining up where it should. Because I had missed some increases and then I made it up at the end thinking that fudging it would be okay. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't make it okay. Fudging increases in a color work where you depend on the increases for... 
where you put the next motif does not work. So I learned that the hard way <laughs> instead of frogging back to, yeah, well, I ended up frogging back. So this is where I am currently. I am on the third of the f of four motifs and it's looking, I like it. I want to make a women's version for myself too. The one that's on this and I want to make a child's version, but we'll get to that. So yes, this is knitted with fritted garn. Please don't kill me for butchering the name. Fritted's Garn and the colors that I am using are, I'm using these three colors. So charcoal, a gray melange and a white melange or a light gray melange. Looking back, I should not have used this yarn or I should have used a darker gray because it's very hard to tell. I don't know. Is it hard to tell on camera? Like the middle stitches are the white. Maybe. I don't know. My husband's not really going to care too much, so I just kept going with it. I realized after I finished the first motif that it was too similar. There was not enough contrast and I just kept going. I wasn't gonna change my yarn because he's not really gonna care. He just wants to have a knitted spreader at some point and he's not gonna care that it blends together. So. That is my second whip, and my third and final whip is another fall plan from this booklet. And it is the Facile sweater. So the Facile sweater is a very chunky knit. And it is knit with brushed alpaca on 12 millimeter needles. <laughs> this is the chunkiest sweater I've ever knitted and I've knitted the marble sweater like twice the marble sweater by petite knit which is a chunky sweater but I think that is knitted on 10 millimeter needles for the adult sizes I am not sure it's on my list for winter so while I'm not the biggest fan of chunky knits I am enjoying this for the most part I don't like knitting with these needles. I just don't like knitting with big needles because I am having, it's working out quickly, but the knitting process in itself is not very, it feels awkward. It just, and it hurts my hands a little bit. So I've been taking breaks while I've been working on this because I'm constantly moving the yarn and it's just not moving over the needle like when I'm moving it to knit like let's say I'm moving it from here to it's just not it just takes a while and I'm not enjoying that and then I'm holding this needle and I'm pressing it against this finger a little bit too hard and it also hurts here so then I switch to this finger yeah, but nevertheless, I am really happy with the progress. Um, this is knitted with, like I said, brushed alpaca, the tweed, the newest tweed yarn from the brushed alpaca, I think. But this is what I have so far. I have two walls of yarn left. It took me almost two balls of yarn to knit this sleeve. And then I have two balls left. So I have a little bit more than two balls actually. So I'm gonna finish off the two balls and then the, use the last remaining bits of those skeins that I have left or those balls that I have left and finish the body. So how this has worked, the facile sweater, you start, you cast on, and then you just knit a triangle up to the measurements that they give you. So like 
let's say my size was 20 centimeters. There is no shaping because this is a very beginner friendly pattern. So there's no shaping included in the pattern. It's literally a page and some text on a second page. That is how short this pattern is. Let's see. <laughs> Maybe they can't. Okay. Okay. So this is the facile sweater. This is the amount of information for the pattern. And then this much right here. <laughs> so there's no shaping. It's marked as beginner friendly. It is very straightforward, very easy to understand. I would say this is a great first Santa Scarn pattern if you are not opposed to the lack of short wear shaping. So you knit down here, then you pick up stitches. It's a drop shoulder, you know, just minus the short wear shaping. So you pick up here, you knit down while slipping stitches to create the even edge here. And you do the same on the other side, slipping stitches, slipping and or knitting. However, the pattern indicates to create that even edge because there is no finishing at the end. The only finishing is done with binding off in the round. So I had incorrectly stated, I think I corrected myself with text, but I had incorrectly stated that there was no decreases. There are decreases on the sleeves. It's just like a knitted, knit one, knit two together or something like that. I don't want to share too much of the pattern information. But yes, yeah, so I finished one sleeve. I'll probably finish the next sleeve tonight and pick up the rest of the body and finish that off. But it's very beginner friendly, very easy, very straightforward, despite the limited amount of text. But yeah, so that is my final finished object and I have just a few acquisitions and they are pattern booklets and a little bit of yarn. So I got this because I want to make this one for my toddler. So it's to match again. <laughs> to match and I got I they did have this color in stock so I was very happy about that and there's a third color but I cannot find it it fell on the floor and I can't find it so that is my first acquisition and then the yarns that I got were alpaca wool so 100% alpaca wool and the colors that I have with me are 3581 and 2650. So I needed like five balls of this, two balls of one contrasting color, and one ball of the third contrasting color, which I cannot find. I apologize. And then my other acquisition was some double Sunday ballet shoes. Why is this not focusing? So I have made quite a few projects with this yarn. This is not the first or second or third time. This is the third time I'm making a project with this yarn. The first time I made an anchors sweater for my daughter when she was very little and it accidentally ended up in the wash. And I was very dramatic about it. I was very sad and it, I don't know where it ended up now because it completely felted and was definitely, it was like a doll size sweater by the time I got it out of the wash. So I really wanted to replace that. It's been like three, three years since I knitted that sweater. The second sweater I, want, I made with this yarn was the Moby sweater for myself held together with a different pink tin silk mohair. And I made that at the start of the year. So this yarn I wanted to replace my daughter's anchors with and I wanted to make an Eva cardigan. And I know the yarn choice for the Eva cardigan is Pergint, but that's fine. I have had no gauge, no, not a lot of gauge difference with 
the Pure Gint and the Double Sunday because I knitted a loose sweater with Double Sunday for my older daughter and the gauge was fine. So I'm not concerned about this not meeting gauge. And yeah. And my final acquisition is some Sorella Tonals. So I fell in love with this color. What is this? Pumpkin Spice Latte. I don't like Pumpkin Spice Latte, let's be clear. I just like the color. <laughs> Nothing against the coffee. I love pumpkin and I like the pumpkin chai. That one's good. But anyway, this yarn, I got this to make a another cumulus blouse because I love my first cumulus blouse so much that I really wanted to make a fallish version and I, I hope I can get to it soon, but I have a lot of plans, so I don't know. I might just spontaneously cast on this. So that's it. That's it for my 10th episode and thank you for watching. I know it was very... A little bit rambly and I apologize it's getting dark I can see how dark it's looking now so thank you again for checking out this video and if you've made it through to the end thank you <laughs> please like and subscribe if you haven't already and I would love to know what you were working on while you were watching this video because it's always fun to know what other people are knitting while watching YouTube podcasts knitting podcast videos because that's what I'm doing when I'm watching other people's podcasts. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I will see you next time. Happy knitting.